So now that we've collected all that data with our data store, let's see how we can analyze that using AWS SageMaker. So SageMaker works in multiple languages with different codes. I like using it with Python, but it's very configurable and it's kind of like an advanced Lambda for inserting Python code or whatever kind of code you want, which I'll show you what your options are for analytics. But normally the code that you can insert into SageMaker all circles around manipulating data. So there's a lot of data related code analytic languages in SageMaker. So let's go over to Amazon SageMaker and we need first to create an instance. So I'll say create a new Jupyter Notebook instance. Jupyter is just the type of uh, environment that it uses for processing and again mostly centered around Python. Okay, for, so for naming it I'll just say analyze 41B. We'll kind of keep a common convention. So I know it's a notebook instance, so I'll keep that the same. Now, you don't have a lot of choices as far as free instances, like a free micro instance, so I'm just going to keep it as this medium instance. You can have a bigger instance, but there's really no reason for our small data set and our small amount of Python code and pandas we're going to use to have anything more than a medium-sized instance. I'm going to keep everything else the same. It'll default to just a simple SageMaker execution role. That's fine for the simple example. So go ahead and create a notebook. This was an error for my last notebook. I didn't have the right name. I think I used some special characters. So go ahead and create a notebook instance. This name's fine. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to say pending. It takes a while. So I'll either fast forward this or skip this notebook instance creation step so you don't have to sit around and wait. All right, there it goes. Finally refresh the screen after a couple minutes and our instance is in service. Now I'll warn you right now so you remember one of the initial surprise costs you'll get from AWS, especially when you start, I've made this mistake myself. Uh, I got all my money refunded, but it was like 70 bucks, so be careful. Is when you create any instance, whether it's EC2 or in SageMaker or another service, make sure you completely close it and delete it. Uh, if you just kind of shut it down, it's going to cost less money. But just if, you know, especially for something where you're not have a lot of related services and code all tied up in an instance, just delete your instances or else they're just going to keep, even if they're not doing anything, they're going to keep costing money every single hour they're opening compute time. So heads up on this. Make sure to delete your instances when you're done. All right, let's go to the instance we just created in Jupyter. So I'll say just say open this instance here in Jupyter. And it's going to present us with a blank notebook based on this code that we just created, this data set. So that's fine. So I'm just going to go over and say new, and these are all our code option here. I'm going to use the Anaconda Chainer 2.7. So this is the Anaconda, which is the most popular starting Python package in the world. I'm going to use version 2.7 because I know it works with 2.7. You can try it with 3.6, but by the time you see this lecture, it may be up to 4.0 and they might have introduced new features, I don't know. So I'm just going to use this with the Anaconda Chainer 2.7, so go ahead and click this, and this is going to create a notebook instance utilizing Python 2.7. I don't think you're going to see any Anaconda features in here, but it uses that package. So I'm just going to paste in my Python code, which uses the most popular data analysis library in the world for Python, which is called Pandas, so I'll just control V this in here, and I'll talk about this a little bit, but this isn't a teach you to code code along class, so it'll be really brief. This is going to bring in Boto3, which is a standard Python AWS specific library. It's going to bring in Pandas as PD. Again, Pandas, you, there's I think like 20, 30 hour courses on Pandas. That's how much you can do it with it. But it creates these data frames, an initial example, and from our data frame here, we can pull out our variables that have data. So in this one, I'm just going to pull out temperature and humidity, but you can also add in humidity index. And then I'm going to run some averages for temperature and humidity. Actually, this is going to be humidity. I should have changed this. I'll just say humidity and data frame dot humidity. Again, you can put humidity index or Celsius or whatever's in your JSON package that's pulled into your data store you can utilize here. So the only change that I need to make here is I need to have it the name of my data set. So if your data set is called something else, this command here is going to bring in your data set under the name you called it. Again, I'll provide this code for you, but my data set... All right, so I already kept this tab open for my data set. And again, this is the data set, not the data store. 
You can't directly invoke a data store, but you can invoke the data step, which is the last part of that four pot part chain from AWS IoT Analytics, channel, pipeline, data store, data set. So each, each part of that chain allows you to do different things. So let's go back to our Python code. And again, we're gonna put it right in here, our data set. Let me close that out so I don't have any syntax errors. Okay, now that we have that, go ahead and save that. You can give it a name if you want. I'm not gonna do that. And again, we're gonna run this in Python 2.7 using the Anaconda package. So go ahead and hit run. And sometimes you'll need to hit this refresh here too. I don't know why that is. Do you wanna restart the kernel? Yeah, we're gonna restart the kernel. And then hopefully everything will work from there. Okay, so sometimes it'll do this. It'll say, it'll give me that averages down here, but I, I don't know if it's a browser problem or a SageMaker issue. It'll say, hey, here's your figure, but it's not my figure. So sometimes I just have to bring this into Chrome or sometimes I just use Chrome. I'm kind of indifferent at this point between using uh, Internet and Internet Explorer and Chrome. I'm really getting turned off by Firefox because every next every later release seems to break more and more. So I'm just going to bring this in here to Chrome, and then instead of getting that silly, hey, here's your graph as a line of text, it's actually going to create a graph. So let's try that again. I'll just save it, run it, and there it is. Yeah, it worked in Chrome. It seems to work in Chrome as the graphing ability of Pandas better. So there's my graph, again, just temperature and humidity. I can change this frame over here to call in a different variable like humidity index or temperature in Celsius or timestamp if I want to graph that, but I already have that as the X axis. So, and you can see Pandas automatically converted it to 24 hour time, which is nice. And these are fake values. If you really hook this up to an ESP8266 or a Raspberry Pi or another device, you'll see that you're going to have more realistic time frames. And again, put your own Pandas code or your own data analysis code in here in Python or whatever kind of big query language you want to use. A lot of functionality here. This does require some programming skills to use, but it's going to give you a lot more flexibility than what we covered previously in QuickSight or using, you know, some kind of plotting library. So this has a lot of functionality and it's certainly something you should use if you have a Python programmer on staff. So something to think about. And I'll go ahead and give you a link to this code so you can use this as well and play with it. All right, let's move on.